I got a confession to make. For many years of my guitar playing life, I had this embarrassing secret that I didn't want to share with anybody and I kind of hoped that nobody would ever find out. But I figured, hey, every great guitar player has one. I mean, after all, for Paul Gilbert, it's always been sweet picking. Sweet picking was and is nearly impossible for me. If I, if I do it with a distorted sound, I really have to... I, I, I can't wait till they're over and I'm going to go and start like a boy. For John Petrucci, it's been inside picking. Now my right hand immediately starts to tense up as soon as I encounter that uh, inside of the string technique. This is usually a problem for most guitar players. Some guys have this taken care of and uh, we'll have to shoot them all. And for Ingve, the hardest thing for him to do has always been, um, um, what was it? Everything's easy for him. Oh. Thanks, Paul. Anyway, for me, the biggest challenge has always been playing scales straight up and down without any sequencing pattern applied, like this. And that was already at the time where I could rip through scale sequencing patterns on the same scale shapes, like this. Or play licks like this. So it wasn't the case of not being able to pick fast or struggling to keep my hands in sync or any of that stuff. Something peculiar was happening when I tried to play scales strictly up and strictly down that was giving me a hard time. For the longest time, I simply swept that problem under the rug and pretended like it didn't exist. That was until I got into teaching. And before I knew it, I had a bunch of students coming to me with the exact same problem I had. They kept asking me, Mike, how do I get my scales faster? And they play a scale, a three note per string scale like the one I showed you, and they said they couldn't speed things up. That's when I decided to put my thinking cap on and figure out what the heck was happening that was making scales, straight scales, so hard to play. And here's what I found. One of the biggest reasons playing scales straight up and down feels much harder has to do with the very high frequency of changes in the arm position as you go from string to string. Think of it like this. When you're doing tremolo picking on one note, Lack of two hand synchronization demands aside, one of the reasons why tremolo picking is easy to do fast is because your arm is in the fixed position the entire time. You can simply plop your forearm down in whatever spot is comfortable for you and then just keep your pick as close as possible to the string you're doing tremolo picking on and you're good to go. You're pretty much guaranteed to pick at least much, much faster, comparatively speaking, than you can play scales or even scale sequences. Now, when you're playing horizontal scales and scale sequences, when you're going up and down in the same pair of strings like this, is comparatively harder because of course you have to sync both hands up now, it's much harder than just doing tremolo on one note, and you do have to do some string changes, however, the demands for moving the arm are still very, very small because by and large you can actually do the string changes with the wrist here if you're using wrist dominant picking that I talked about in my other videos on this channel. The problem isn't necessarily in the string changes themselves, is that you have to readjust the arm position, the forearm here, very frequently when you play a scale straight up and down, because if you have a scale sequence that has frequent string changes, but most of them can be done with the wrist, like this one. It is still much easier to play than a straight scale going straight up and straight down, because in the pattern I just played, I was doing a lot of these string changes using my wrist. So that decreases the frequency of the number of times I have to adjust my arm position, which makes it easier to play fast and keep my hands in sync. This big advantage exists on pretty much every scale sequence you play. Now back to scales. As a consequence of having to move your arm with a high frequency to change strings every few notes, you run into a pretty interesting two-hand synchronization challenge. If you are playing three note per string scales using strict alternate picking, aka the way they used to play scales back in the 80s, this challenge becomes even more obvious. Take for example the A major scale. You're playing your downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, and then your pick has to travel around the A string, then get back inside the space of the strings and then go in the other direction to play the A string with an upstroke. Your fretting hand finger in the meantime only has to go from the A note here to a D note here. So it travels a very short distance, your fretting hand finger does, while your picking hand and the pick has to travel a much larger distance. And that is a big reason why it is harder to keep your hands in sync. This problem becomes less obvious and easier to deal with in scale sequences because you have more time that you spend on each individual string even when the notes are going by fast, which means 
means there are fewer occurrences of the problem to begin with. You have more time for your brain to prepare your hands to do the right motions when the problem does come up. Now, to be fair, the same kind of problem also happens when you do three upper string scales using directional picking. However, that problem happens in reverse. When you do the last downstroke on the sixth string and you go to play the first note on the A string with another downstroke, now the picking motions actually becomes almost smaller than the fretting hand motion. So it is still a challenge to keep your hands in sync on string changes, even with directional picking. It is just a much smaller challenge because you're not dealing with motions that are way too big like alternate picking to begin with. Everything I just pointed out becomes even more obvious when you move away from three note per string scales and move into the land of two note per string pentatonic scales, where pentatonic scale sequences are exponentially easier to play fast than two note per string scale patterns. Take for example this A minor box and this scale sequence. Believe it or not, it is much easier to play the scale sequence fast. Then it is to play the scale itself at even close to the same speed. Now, all that being said, that's not to say that you can't overcome these challenges in your picking. Of course you can. With some practice, you can overcome just about anything, and many people have. Paul Gilbert comes to mind. Which leads me to the reason why many people don't overcome these challenges, other than the fact that they're simply not aware of them. And that is, scale sequences are a lot more fun to play, they're more musical, they're way more likely to be something you actually use in music. Therefore, you simply are more likely to spend more time on scale sequences, which is another reason why the gap in speed between playing scales straight up and down and playing scale sequences straight up and down gets even wider for most people. So what's the takeaway here? How can you use this to play guitar better? Well, first of all, if you, like me, have secretly been struggling to play scales straight up and down and you found scale sequences to always feel a little bit easier and you never understood why, now you know that there's nothing wrong with you, you're a perfectly normal human being. Pay particular attention to the first note you play on every string change, because that is the point in the scale where your hands are most likely to get out of sync if you're not careful. And what you need to do, no matter which picking style you use, is make sure that both hands arrive at that note at the exact same time. That's what's gonna make your hands lock in tight in sync. Figure out which pair of strings you tend to get tripped up on the most, and you tend to lose your synchronization the most. If you isolated strings three and two, and you've gotten to the point where it feels easy and, and very clean to play fast, remember what your hand position looks like and feels like when you're playing it, and then make sure that when you're playing it in the context of a scale, by the time you get to strings three and two, your hand is in that exact same position and is just as relaxed as it was when you were playing it in isolation. Now, beyond everything I just said, you're going to want to have somebody take a look at your playing, somebody who knows what they're doing, ideally, and tell you exactly what specific micro adjustments you need to make in your playing and practicing to make whatever it is you're working on feel easier to play fast. If you want even more help from me on building your guitar speed, check out the link in the description of this video. Go to the page on the screen right now. I'm gonna show you a free one-hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. What it is, is a way to practice to build speed Speed where you don't have to start slow and gradually build speed in small increments because, come on, that's a pretty boring way to practice and more importantly, doesn't work nearly as well as most people tell you that it does. If you want to know a different way to build speed, check out that link, enter your email address, I'll send you the video for free. And when it comes to building guitar speed, it is just as important to know what not to do as it is to know what to do when you practice because oftentimes it's the things you are doing that you shouldn't be doing that are causing you so much frustration and are creating the very speed plateaus you're struggling with. If you want to know six of the most common guitar speed building mistakes and what to do about them, watch this video next.